Hello, this is a follow-up visit to tune and check this Spexline Model A made in 1904 that we've actually repolished and uh, reconditioned. It was also re restored by somebody else before. Um, just a point I mentioned to the client is that the, uh, you could raise the pedals up slightly because they're only four centimetres or so from the floor. So um, cast the cups and he, he is a little bit taller than I am, so just over six foot. And that might be an idea. So things like that, so just trying to look at when uh, we visit, see if there's anything we might recommend. So first of all, I'm going to check the pitch of A. And as you can see, it's about 444, which is the maximum we'd have it. We tuned it at that before it went out of the workshop and uh, hasn't really dropped at all. So this house has got good humidity, obviously not got not dried out. No, I, I'll leave it at 444. Four, four. The client's not playing with other instruments. Um, 442 would be the normal thing I'd leave it at maximum, but I don't think it's a problem. And, and it's, it's an advantage not to turn the pins too much. So if you are obviously keeping it at concert pitch, you're tending to turn them all a bit. We've mentioned this before. Uh, having it slightly sharp is uh, useful because you have less pins to turn. I hope that's understandable. So I'm not going to check pitch generally and see so that should be slightly flatter if anything the, the, the bass is stretched downwards usually a little let's look up so that's that's a bit flat to that so this is obviously not an extremely accurate tuning uh, uh, measure it's just, I don't use it for when I'm tuning but it's it's quite useful to start with so this C I tend to start tuning using with C. It's a bit flat, so we're gonna I'm gonna leave that at the pitch it is. Amazingly, the unison's in tune, all three strings. So then we're gonna start with C. So I'm starting with C, which has got to be, if anything, slightly higher than the A. Well that's actually fine. So I think we can start tuning. That string's a bit impure, so I'm going to try the other string. That's more pure. Becksteins are often a bit impure around here. See, that one's a lot more impure than... You may not be able to hear it on the video, but we'll chart tuning with this string. And that's fine, so perfectly fine. So both of those... I'm going to have a problem wedging it because the frame's there, but I think we can do it. Now, if the string's slightly impure, no, they're not, those two are pure. This first stage, you're trying to see, see how pure you can get the nose. And that will set it up for the whole piano then. I think that's close I can get it. It's nearly 100%. On the other string wasn't so pure, so let's have a listen to that. I don't think we're going to get purer than that. It's as good as we're going to get. So a slight impurity on one of those strings it means it gives the sense of it beating slightly. And then I'm going to drop to the C below. I'm not going to show you all the tuning because it would be too long a video, but I hope that gives you some idea. So we drop C octaves. And that's a more or less pure, if anything, very slightly stretched. And I haven't tuned the octave. Went to the G, which is my order of tuning. And that should be slightly narrowed, that octave. So a slight beating on it, and that's fine. But noticeably, all the strings are. I think the middle string is the one that's mostly up. Well, we'll tune them to that left-hand one. I just put downward pressure on. I hit it reasonably hard. And that's fine and then tune the other one. Whoops.
and that's in tune. So what's the middle string? So I'm tuning the octave G, and they're tuning the D, and I want that slightly to be slightly flat too. I actually like my first few intervals to be a little bit more flat than the others, so we can get the home keys more pure, but please don't worry about that. If you're just starting to tune, then equal temperament's what you'd aim for. I aim for a temperament that's between equal and keller. Um, sorry to be complicated there, because I prefer the home keys to be purer. I'll come back to the A. By the way, you might find it useful to download your own app. This is called Pano Tuner. Um, and uh, you might find it useful just to follow the video rather than having to look at this. Because then you can follow the video and see what's going on. Now I'm actually going to flatten the A a little bit from where it is. Down to just... Because I'd like, like the A to be slightly beating with the G. With, with the D, very slight beating, slightly narrowed fifth. There we are. And then you get a nicer home key. Uh, I'm sorry to be complicated with all of that, but maybe it'll interest you. And the main thing is, uh, as I say, equal temperament when you start with. Now I've tuned from the C's, the G's, D, A, A, E, B, and that B, and now as I've tried to narrow the th fifths a little bit to make that beat a bit less than it would normally do, I now need to compensate by making the, the intervals a bit more pure and then when we get back to the C hopefully it'll be, uh, the fifths will be uh, pl very pleasant to listen to and the uh, thirds, we'll see how we get on when we get to the end. So now I've gone round the whole temperament, just checking it again. See, this is my temperament, it's different from most people's. And when we get back to the C again, we want the fifth here and the fourth here not to be beating too much. And as I mentioned to you, in trying to get the home keys, so they're beating slightly less, that third slightly less than this one. It's quite a lot less, and Kellner temperament is a huge amount less. In Bach's time, there's, there's a lot of talk about temperaments. Uh, but as I say, if you are new to tuning, recommend equal temperament really. If you're going to take tuning exams, equal temperament is the important thing to go for. And then later on, you can try out sort of older temperaments and I prefer the sound when that chord is more pure than it would normally be if you tune that third sharper. So not hugely different but just something to think about when you're tuning. So now we're going up from C sharp here right to the top of the piano. It's very slight sharpening the octaves, that's something you, you do if you're a tuner. And some tuners sharpen them more than others. I try to keep them as little bit sharp as little sharp as possible uh, so that the octave doesn't sound too sharp but it does need to go up slightly unless you've got a very long piano in which case you might not it hardly need to sharpen it at all it's to do with the un inharmonicity of the bass strings and that's so i'm trying to get as pure as possible and that is quite sharp just easing it slightly to bring it down very slightly of course, the ability of the tuning is more important than anything I'm talking about. So really to make sure the tension is equalized here. So between this bit and this bit, have the equal tension. So you, I do that by encouraging this down, as it were. A lot of people do it by hitting it hard as possible. That's another way of doing it. If you do hit it hard, you need ear protection if you're tuning all the time. Now, if that's a bit too sharp, so just bring easing it down. That's better. And then it's a tuner's decision how sharp to make it. That's just slightly sharp, maybe half a beat. And the fifth is usually I go for a reasonably pure fifth. That's better. You see how sharp that was. Just comparing it, this one with the middle string. 
then easing it out. Hitting it quite hard, easing it out. I know tuners have different techniques, so please do put your technique at the bottom of the video if you prefer something else. Trying to get it as pure as possible. You might need to go past it just to see how pure you can get it. And there's all three strings. As pure as I can get them. And slightly sharp on the octave. I've gone right up to the top of the piano in octaves and we're going to do, do the tenor and bass now. I've actually left the few of the top notes out for, for the end because I like to hear them in conjunction with the rest of the piano. That's nicely in tune. There's just a question of checking fifths and fourths, beating as little as possible and that's, that's fine. Uh, the main thing is, as I say, the stability of the tuning is much more important. So keeping them stable, hitting it hard or easing it downwards, that's much more important than anything. As it happens, that F is already in tune, we don't need to turn it. And also, the E is slightly out. So check which string it is. See if the fourth and the fifth are okay, and then that string can be tuned. Leaning into it. And hitting it quite solidly. Okay. Okay. Now having done the tuning, I'm going to do some voicing. The clients were already marked on the follow-up worksheet here, some notes which they felt were too mellow or too bright. So look at those first. I've marked them already on the, on the keys, as you can see. I've marked bright that way and mellow that way and we'll just look at those and also generally see if there's anything I think needs uh, voicing as well. So now we're going to find voice and normally we're voicing mainly for bright notes so we'll do the f first before we do the mellow. Now the piano has been pretty well played in uh, as you'll see on the previous video I'll give a link to somebody else did this work we've uh, refined it a bit more tried to refine it a bit more um, and you can see if you look at the dent indentations that it's been played uh, both by the previous client and this client and been played in nicely so now it's a good opportunity to voice it so uh, this one here was sort of a bit bright we'll start at the bottom so if this is a bit bright uh, what I'm going to do is just at the very tip first one will feel the hammer that feels fine nice and tight don't want to open it up here particularly anymore uh, it's a good tone so just very gently on the tip we want to go no more than 1.5 millimeters deep according to the Steinway course that we did. Here we're going to go 1.5 deep, exactly on the, stri on the strike point. So we'll, we'll perhaps just test two or three of these before we do the rest of the, of the piano. So I'm going to do that one, and this one here is definitely bright. This is the last one in the row. In fact, I'll show you, uh, listen to that before we actually voice it. So here's the break point, and if you look at the notes, that's where the bass strings end and the treble strings start, and they're definitely and the clients picked it up and noticed a difference in voicing there. So we obviously have to try and disguise them because we're not going to get that exactly the same as that one, but we can bring it down and not make it too too down, otherwise it will sound a bit soggy. So we'll see what we can manage to do. It's quite common for Becksteins to have a, quite a pronounced break point here. So I'm going to voice on the point at which it's on the strike point. So as I say, no more than 1.5 millimeters. Um, I think that's about correct. There's no official, if you look at all the p manuals, you don't know, there's anything official. So if you're a piano tuner, do have a slightly different idea. Don't be frightened to try it. Um, I don't think you should have to go officially by the book. So this will definitely mellow it, as we'll see in a minute. So just fluffing it up as well. I tend to like to fluff it up, and I can see which ones I've done. Although fluffing it, making fluff isn't going to help necessarily, but it just tells you, and that's definitely voiced down. So we'll see how that compares with the one next to it. You can hear now, bought them as similar as we can get. I'm quite pleased with that really. Don't normally achieve as well as that, but let's listen to this one. So 
that's brighter now than the left hand one. So we'll perhaps go for the, these three as well. I think those are about right. We're going to do a bit of voicing anyway on some of the others. So now we're going to voice the ones next to it. Not quite so much, just gently. It's uh, important not to go too far. You end up with a soggy sounding hammer, as it were. Um, so you want to just balance this really. So I think we should probably go for three there. So we'll do three of them. Now have a listen to that. Of course, you could voice all day long trying to get better and better. Um, and uh, certainly, if the client would like us to, we could spend a whole day voicing the whole piano, trying to get it even more accurate. So now let's listen. A normal way of testing is doing in semitones like that. And they're quite similar. And that's slightly brighter. That's one we didn't do. But I'm going to leave it at that because it, it won't sound quite right. It's really difficult to know. You have to make your own decision, obviously. That's too bright. And the client didn't mark that one, interesting enough, maybe because he noticed these other ones so much, so we've marked that one as well. So we're marking that. Um, I think I'll put my marking a bit further down. We know it's my marking then. And we, I've already rubbed off a couple of these down here because I felt they were correct now. Now the mellow ones that we've, uh, he, the client's identified, we've, um, one of them I've done, so I've just lightly refaced it because um, they are slightly indented, so refacing it, just pulling it around, make it a bit more of a point, really, and then afterwards I like to smooth it off like this. That's uh, unique to me, I think, using one of these. This is a, this is for feet, um, podiatrist, I can't remember what you call them. You buy it from the chemist. I find it really useful, actually. Cause it's, it's rough enough here to, to reface, and then, you've, then you can smooth it off with that. Um, if you've got another method, then please let me know. I'm sure that's uh, a bit quirky, but that's what I do. So just smoothing it off like this, taking it around that way. Um, you, ideally, you turn the action around and you can do this side, but um, I'm just doing it like this. So trying to get not much refacing, just a little bit. If you overdo it, you've got it very bright, obviously. So I want to brighten it slightly here and with the one next to it's got to be brightened as well so let's try that one there we go just going smoothing it off like this so it's refacing try and keep the right shape make sure you don't angle this because it's got to hit all three strings uh, the same it can sound very odd if it's really angled so that's really important when you fit the hammers you've got to make sure they're really uh, hitting the strings all three th strings at the same time that's really important so Let's, uh, let's try from this way a bit as well, just a little bit. So I'm not really doing that much, as you can see, just enough to, to brighten it slightly. And uh, obviously you can tell then whether it, if you want to do it a bit more, you could as smoothing it off. And you can see those two very different, look very different from the ones next to them. And uh, we'll, we'll listen to them and see what they're like now. Okay, the, the one on the right was the one that was too mellow. And they sound the same now. And those two, we've mellowed both. We've made those both brighter. And the one next to it. So I think they're identical now. This is ideal to to voice when the pianos have been played in a bit because you can make a huge difference. As you can see, if you get rid of the indentations, then you're going to uh, make it brighten it quite a lot. Um, so when the hammers are first put on. We, we voice it as much as we possibly can. When it's played in like this, may, let's say after two or three years reasonable amounts of playing, uh, then voicing it's I an ideal to voice then because you can make make a huge difference. And also the client um, will get have got used to the piano and what they would like it to be. Maybe you find it's generally on the bright side or mellow. So uh, this is uh, ideal really, as I say, to voice after it's been played in them because we didn't put these hammers on ourselves they are slightly more played in than they would otherwise be so that's a follow-up visit after having sold this piano just to fine-tune and voice um, I hope it's been helpful if you uh, would like to make any comments I'm trying to make some videos that I think to share to give share ideas together about tuning and about uh, voicing and so on and it'd be really useful I find them they're great to learn so do please put comments underneath
I'll put a link at the bottom of the video uh, to the, this piano when it first came into stock and the assessment we made of it. I've always loved Bechstein Touch. If you've got a piano that you like regulated, restored, polished, or you're interested in buying a piano from us, please do write to us, info at robertspianos.com. Thank you very much indeed for listening.